the second biggest field in main event history. $10 million for first in a lifetime of being called world champion. Today is the day, you guys. It's the main event. $10,000 buy-in. This is gonna be the biggest tournament that I play all year long. Biggest prize, most prestige. After seeing Jesse take second in this event many, many years ago, 10 years ago, in fact, I've been inspired to play this event, try to have a similar run. <laughs> but going in with no expectations this year, I'm going in with clear head. I feel like I have a really good energy right now. I'm excited for it, but I have more of a long-term vision about how tournaments go for people. So instead of putting all my eggs in one basket and being totally devastated if I don't go deep in this, instead I'm just going to take it one hand at a time and just pay attention to the opponents that I get at my table. I just feel really in the zone and ready to take anyone on who's at my table. So right now it looks like we're in Bally's silver section. So headed over there now and this would be the tournament to run good in. The best way to introduce you to some of the people at my table is just to get into a hand and show you how they play right away. I didn't recognize anyone at my table. No reads. This is the first level. Let's get into it. All right. The hijack guy, he's like an older guy. Houston, Texas hat on his head. He opens to 400. The button peels. I'm in the big blind with pocket tens. So I'm raising it up. I squeeze to 2k. Hijack fold and the button player calls. The flop is 853 rainbow. And on this board, I bet a third of the pot, but checked with the coaches later on. They all said to go bigger, so one tiny mistake. He calls. The turn is an offsuit ace. I'm gonna slow down on this one. Obviously, he could have a lot of ace X, but if he has any floats, I can check call on this turn and then evaluate on the river. So I check it over to him. He bets 4,000. So, you know, I'm gonna stick to the plan. I'm just gonna peel one off on the turn, most likely fold river. The river is a queen of spades. So check it over to him again. He snap checks back. I'm like, sweet, maybe I win. Flip over my tens and he has ace three offsuit. What? <laughs> so he, first of all, he called pre on the button and then he called my squeeze with ace three offsuit and then he didn't value bet on the river. I don't know. Welcome to the main event. First level of the main event. We got some hands. He hasn't heard any of these, so these are all gonna be first time he hears them. I open sixes under the gun to 600 at 200 big wine. This French guy who seems reggy, middle-aged guy, he peels under the gun too. Flop is ace, seven, six, two hearts. So we flop bottom set, but on ace high flops, EP versus EP. My coach tells me I should check this a lot. Especially I like against... checking with, with our set too because you unblock all of his aces that you can get a check raise in and get four, four yeah. suits first. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I did. I check. He checks back though. The turn is a five. Off suit five. So ace seven six five. I bet now. I bet 1200. He calls. The river is a four. The flush draw misses. Now what do you do? It's like a third or 40 percent. Okay, something. so you lead small. Yeah. Block that. Okay. I checked and he bet pot. It sucks. It does. Check. What does he turn into a bluff though? Um, hearts, missed hearts from the flop. Yeah, you have to check the flop with hearts. Yeah. Yeah. So they call. Yeah. Sounds I like. call. I call. Yeah. Queen nine of hearts. Sweet. Nice hand. Queen eight of clubs in the low jack to 600. The button calls. The flop is ace, jack, x, two clubs and a spade. So I see bet with a flush draw and the button calls. Turn is a 10 of hearts. I continue. I have 
kind of a read on this guy. He's like really tight, and I think I could get him to fold. The berries. Like I think I could. I would definitely get him to fold the berries by the river, and I think he would call something like queen ten or king ten or something on this turn, and then fold the river too. So. You could do that. You could also just bet really tight on turn. I, I want either one. You have a blocker than nuts, so it's probably an okay hand to, to bluff it off with. Yeah. Um, I bet two thirds on the turn. He calls. Okay. The river is an offsuit six. What size do you go? 130% pot. Oh, you go huge. Yeah, I think so. He's probably pretty capped. I really like want to make it tough on stickier people. I mean, I don't know who this guy is. Like, he's not. People... He's the opposite of sticky. Like he oh. was getting worried. He was kind of like paranoid that people had it all the time. And you may not have pair plus draw for the turn, but I don't know. So, so what'd you bet? I bet like 40% pot because I thought that it would work on pretty much everything he had except two pair of plus like stuff that he was calling i thought that he was basically just gonna like fold <laughs> most of the time and so i didn't have to go that big what are you repping here a uh, good ace or two pair king queen i have a queen so i blocked the straights when you bet bigger with king queen though or like maybe. two pair yeah maybe so that's what that's the only thing i'm concerned about if he thinks about it like the sizing and he's yeah. like it seems full of shit did it, did it work? I don't know, you may have found a better size than me, but I would just go big to like ensure that like our story makes a lot of sense. Well, it worked anyway. He folded and he claimed he had King Jack. Nice. This is level two now. The same guy with the Houston hat, I'm gonna call him old man coffee number two. He limps. The same guy from last time, he limps behind. But he had been raising good hands, so I'm like, okay, you guys most likely don't have much. Folds to me in the cutoff. I have ace king offsuit, obviously raising that one up. I make it 1500 to go. Checked with the coaches on that one. They also said I should go bigger. So I just need to go bigger all around, I think. Both players call. The dealer puts out king, 10, eight, two diamonds, and a spade. Checks to me, I bet 2K, and both players call again. <laughs> the turn is a deuce of clubs. So none of the draws get there. It's a complete brick. Checks to me. 11,300 in the pot. I throw out 5,500. Just PLO guy calls. The river is the 10 of diamonds. Not the best one. Flushes get there if he was continuing on the turn with that. If he was calling again on the turn with a 10, he now has that. It looks like a pretty scary card. But now he leads into me for 9,000 into a pot of some like 22 something in there. A little less than half the pot. I think if he had a flush, he would go bigger, but maybe not. I'm not sure about people's sizings yet. Not sure. He does credibly rep a 10. What are his bluffs here that I would try to be picking off? Queen Jack is a, is a good candidate. I don't think he would have something like Ace Queen that turns itself into a bluff because he would have raised pre. Um, I think he folds 8X of whatever on the turn. Just when I bet twice, he probably folds that on the turn. He'd have Jack nine that he's turning into a bluff on this river. So he does have a few bluffs and he did make it less than half the pot. So I was on the fence for a while. I know it looks like a really scary card and maybe it's just like me being way too stationy to consider calling here. I ended up folding it after a long tank and I think that he really wanted to show me. So he did, he flips over his bluff, he had a bluff and you'll never guess what it was. He had eight, seven offsuit. That's a thing. Definitely didn't see that one coming. I thought he would have folded that for sure pre-flop, first of all, to all of the raises. And then on the second barrel, I thought he would fold an eight for sure, especially such a weak eight. He got bailed out by such like a scary river that he could just bluff me off of my hand. That was really wild. So starting to learn a little bit more about my table at this point. Some of them are wild. Other ones are just like folding every single hand. Some are folding top pair if you barrel three times. So it was just quite the mix of players. I did find one good hand at least. Houston opens under the gun two to 1200. That's three X the big one. I'm on the button with pocket threes. So we toss in the call, I'm looking for a set. And the dealer obliges. He puts out seven three deuce, two spades. So we flop middle set. OMC Texas bets 2000 on this flop. I'm obviously gonna raise this up. There's a flush draw, we need some protection. I can get value from all those overpairs. So I make it 6,000. He very quickly calls. 
The turn is an ace of spades. He checks it over to me and I'm gonna slow down on this card. I don't wanna bloat the pot now against a flush and be really sad if I get check raised on this turn. And I'm gonna try to get value on the river. And the river is perfect. The river is the ace of hearts. So now we have a boat and we're just hoping that he has an ace at this point. So on this river, he leads into me. He bets 6K, so kind of small. I don't know if he's betting a flush that small. I think he'd probably go a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking he might have an ace. I make it 16,000 to go. He doesn't think too long, maybe 20 seconds before folding kings, pocket kings to me, face up. The last interesting hand of the day, I raise tens over a limp, get three bet from the small blind, I peel, I call his C bet, and we lose versus ace jack when he hits the river ace. So it wasn't the day one of my dreams, but look, if you have any chips in the bag in the main event going into the next day, you have a lot of hope, it's a slow structure, so I'm still feeling really good. On our day off, we got to check out the incredible GG party hosted at the top of the Nobu Hotel at Caesars Palace. It was an insane view of the strip and we had a lot of fun. All right, ready for day two. We're about to take, take off, get out of here. Jesse's got a bazillion chips. Tell the people how much you got. A bazillion chips. <laughs> no, he's got heaps. He's got like 240K, something like that. He was all over poker news in the first day. Only it was pretty cool. Only 230. It was pretty cool to be able to keep track of his progress throughout the day. All right, we're gonna go pick up some breakfast. I'm sorry, buddy, we have to bring you back inside. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He's like, nah, I'm chilling. When Granny wakes up, you can come outside. Let's go. We hope that we don't see you for another few hours, at least 12 hours. Wow, look at this guy. We're going to kick things off today with 400 small blinds, 800 big blinds, 800 and I'd like to wish you all the very best of luck today. Be winners, please. Buckle up and be All right, you guys, we're really quick. We're on first break. <laughs> what a roller coaster. Quick hand, really fast. I open ace of spades under the gun, too. This is the table right behind me. The button and the big blind both call. Made it 1800. The flop is ace. Six deuce, two spades and a heart. I check it over to the button. Yeah. Hi to the vlog. Hi guys, sorry, crash the vlog. I check it over to the button who is a recreational player. He throws out 2200, the big blind calls. And even though I'm starting to feel a little less confident in my hand already, three ways, I'm definitely not gonna fold just yet. So I toss in the 2200. All three of us see the four of diamonds on the turn. It checks all the way around. The dealer puts out the seven of spades on the river. So the obvious front door flush gets there, but when the big blind checks it over to me, I'm not too worried about her having a flush. So now with two pair, I definitely wanna go for some value. I don't wanna check it over, have button check back and <laughs> miss out on some value from a middling ace. I also don't wanna bet too big to where I'm representing a flush and then scare off my customers. So I toss out a bet of 5,000. Button makes the call. Big blind lays it down. And when I turn over two pair, button flashes ace jack offsuit and we take down a nice sizable pot. Finally, after a few levels of grinding, which is really long in this tournament, we're back over starting stack. I know it's not a huge milestone on here on day two, but for me, it feels like a ton of momentum and I have a lot of confidence at this table in particular. Everyone's pretty passive pre and not putting a lot of pressure on me post flop. So I'm feeling it, I'm ready to spin this stack up. This hand boggled my mind. Let's see what you guys think about it. I open Queen Knight of Clubs under the gun two. Same exact opponents from last hand on the button and big blind both make the call. So the three of us see Queen Jack three, two clubs on the flop. We got top pair, flush draw to go with it. So we love this flop. Big blind checks it over to me. And I'm gonna check this one as well. It's the worst queen I'm gonna open from this position pre-flop. We're three-handed, so I'm not gonna get three streets of value from the worst queen that I have in my range. And I've got that backup flush draw to go with it. So I'm pretty happy to check call this one. I check it over to the button, he checks it back. The turn is the four of diamonds bringing another flush draw. Big blind checks again. So. I think that she could have some stuff, but most of the time I'm uh, way ahead here. I think the button 
was playing so straightforward that I can reliably say that he does not have a queen, especially when there's a flush draw on the flop. I bet 4,000 with a lot of confidence into 6,600. Button then snap raises, barely thinks about it at all, raises to 10,000, big blind folds, and I'm not loving it, but I have a flush draw, I'm not going anywhere. So I put in the 6K and the river is a seven of spades. So pretty big brick, no flush draws come in. I'm already dreading the decision I'm gonna have to make on the river. So I check it over to the button. He snap checks it back, no thought you guys, and flips over pocket fours for a turn set of fours. I was just speechless, I was stunned. I was like, oh, when he snap checks back, I was like, maybe there's a chance I win. And he was just getting funny on the turn. No, he had turn set of fours and did not go for value on the river. I, my mind was boggled. Very sad to lose about 12K in that pot. I guess it could have been worse. Right back to where I started, right back to where I started the day, just all in one hand, pretty big bummer. Go on to break with about 43K. Time to rally, time to bring it back up. All right, coming back into level eight, we're officially in the danger zone, looking for any spot to get in and go for it. It doesn't take too long until level eight before I get ace queen offsuit in the low jack. Under the gun had already opened. This was the girl who was playing really well. Shout out to her. Her name is Rosalie Petit. She's a French poker coach. She was awesome. I really enjoyed watching her play. Anyway, she opens under the gun to 2,500. I jam my last 17,700 in there. She calls me with pocket nines and the dealer, as if he was late to an appointment, just whips out the board, doesn't care that it's a $10,000 buy-in, <laughs> just rips out the board like a Band-Aid. We don't get there. And that's all she wrote for the main event. <laughs> Feeling bummed just because I was in such a good like mental space coming into the day. I'm pretty proud of how I played today. I did stay patient when the deck kind of went the other direction. <laughs> so I'm still happy with how I played when the cards weren't going my way. That's all you can do, Just play the cans you're dealt the best that you can. Didn't go my way today. It's unfortunate, but I'm gonna go kind of take a break from poker tonight, recover, hang out with the puppies, do it all over again in another tournament sometime soon. It's been a long 10 days of poker. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one or in the comments. Bye.